Hello there and welcome back to another episode of Wine Reviews by yours truly, Wisconsin Wine Guy. These are wines that you can find in your everyday liquor store, grocery store, or some wine shop shelves. I go through and pick out some wines and do a simple review. Thumbs up, I highly recommend. Three quarters, you know what? Uh, I can do this. I probably even hold a couple of bottles. Halfway, you know, it's, it's not so much for me. I can see it being for someone, but just not for my palate. You know, thumbs down get that wine out of here so on today's show we're going to do doubles again you know me I love it when I can uh, do a review on two wines or more from the same winery so we're gonna to go to Australia and the two wines you see those screw caps on there two wines will be yellowtail so we're gonna be doing a yellowtail Sauvignon Blanc and a yellowtail Pinot Grigio now I know what you're thinking for some of you out there, some of the, the purists out there, you know, are some of the wine snobs out there. You know, I just simply like to drink wine. If the wine is good, I don't care what the brand name is. I don't care what the reputation is or the reputation it has had over time. But there is a place and there is a palate for every wine and a wine for every palate out there. And that's why I bring you this show. So now, Yellowtail's been around for a long time. I mean, they came in and just swooped on the market, you know, several years ago. And the wines are everywhere. All right, now here's what you don't know. Uh, Yellowtail produced a reserve line of wines, you know, that hit the market that was, that was phenomenal. They had like a Merlot, Cabernet, Shiraz, even did a Chardonnay. It was really good, you know, but um, haven't seen any of the reserve level wines in ages. They probably don't even produce them anymore. Who knows? But I'm going to look up, look that up on Google <laughs> and see if I can find any more of those wines. And if you can find some of those on Google, I recommend you give them a try and see where they're at. When I had them, it was about 2000 and, uh, 2009, 2010 when I had those. All right. So now let's get back to the subject at the end here. So the Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Grigio from Yellowtail Wines, Australia. And let's see if we get a vintage. And it looks to be that these wines are non-vintage, uh, meaning that these do not come from the grapes that were harvested in any particular year. Oh, take that back. The Sauvignon Blanc is not vintage, but the Pinot Grigio is 2018. So the Pinot Grigio is 2018. The Sauvignon Blanc is not vintage. That's odd, considering coming from a country where, you know, they do a lot of Sauvignon Blancs. So let's give it a taste. As I always do in this show, the wines are open, allowed to rest for a day or two. And when I'm doing two or more wines, I like to pour the wines, do a, re a taste on both of them before I give you my opinion. Now, screw caps, again, if you heard me on many shows, I have no issue with screw caps. My thing is simply this. My logic is if the wine is bad, that means it went into the bottle that way. All right, screw caps going to protect it. Now, I've had these wines already, so I know what order I'm going to taste them in. Most people probably will go Pinot Grigio and then Sauvignon Blanc. But I'm going to go opposite. You know, Sauvignon Blanc, you know, it can be uh, uh, pretty tart, it can be pretty acidic, you know, uh, uh, pretty citrusy, you know, and a Pinot Grigio can have some citrus going to be a little softer, you know, more fruit forward, you know, or, or, or fruit in the mid palate. It's going to be more softer, okay? Fruitier tasting. So in this case, if I go Pinot Grigio, then Sauvignon Blanc, you know, Sauvignon Blanc is going to be like overly tart. I don't want that. So we're going to go with the Sauvignon Blanc first, non vintage. The swirl, the smell. You look at the color on both of these. I mean, it's fairly cold. Just take them out of the refrigerator. But look at the color on both of these wines if you can. You know, a little straw yellow, you know, on both of these. You know, clear at the top, straw yellow. You know, nice clarity. Nose on the Sauvignon Blanc, traditional Sauvignon Blanc nose. Citrus, grapefruit, and melon on this one. On the Pinot Grigio, a mm, little apple, pear, and uh, what is it? Lemon. I'm going to go with lemon. You know, you know how when you like uh, zest the lemon, you get that burst of the oils? That's what I'm going to go with on that one. So, pear, apple, and lemon zest. Now for the taste. Mmm. 
Actually, in that case, it'll be the Ritz. Acidity is nice. Okay, I take nothing away from that. With good acidity. And now for the taste. Okay. All right. There's that. Okay, 11% alcohol in this one. You know, uh, decent legs. Well, medium speed legs on that one. And on the Pinot Grigio, we have 11.5% alcohol as well. For the Ritz, And now for the taste. Acidity is great on both of these. All right. Now, here's a judgment. I like the acidity on both of the acidity on both of these wines. That's a good thing. But Sauvignon Blanc, we come there first, non-vintage. And again, Yellowtail makes wines for you to drink every day. They make wine for you to drink every day. Okay, and uh, we're not talking about you know wines are gonna win you know like crazy crazy awards and gonna fetch high price dollars, but these are wines that it's very approachable for everyone to drink, and that's exactly how I'm judging them. What was interesting about the Sauvignon Blanc, again not vintage, was that it had nice grapefruit nose, had melon in the background, nice mouth watering acidity on it, but something special. A little grassy, <laughs> which, you know, I dig. It was pretty nice. But I'm going to give the Sauvignon Blanc from Yellowtail a nice everyday drinking Sauvignon Blanc. It's not going to break the bank. I'm going to give it three quarters. You know, I would drink this. I probably won't have any just sitting on hand. But if I needed a quick Sauvignon Blanc to take to a party that everyone's going to enjoy, excuse me, it more than likely well, would be this one unless I have my eyes set on something Specific. All right, so the Hotel Sauvignon Blanc gets a three quarters for you, Wisconsin wine guy. Now for the Pinot Grigio. No, no, Pinot Grigio, again, fruity, you know, uh, light acidity or soft acidity. Again, easy to drink. Just a little hit, a kiss of sweetness there. You know, kind of like more semi dry than dry. Okay. But uh, I look for more Pinot Grigios, not just the standard across the world Pinot Grigios. You know, so I'm going to say this. This wouldn't be for me. Now, again, if it's at a party or making a white sangria, I probably would use it. But I'm sure there's a palette for someone out there. I just want a little bit more for my Pinot Grigios. There's too many Pinot Grigios that are just like here. I want Pinot Grigios that spike and go here and go there. So Wisconsin Wine Guy is going to give the Yellowtail Pinot Grigio a halfway thumb. It's not so much for me, but... It probably would be for you. It is very approachable. You know, very approachable. Again, another wine won't drink, break the bake. You know, so give it a try. If you try it, or if you have a uh, <laughs> tongue tie, or if you have already tried the Pinot Grigio from Yellowtail, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. So, again, recap Sauvignon Blanc, three quarters. You know, I dig this. I would drink this. And Pinot Grigio, halfway. This is your Wisconsin wine guy saying, as always, let your palate be the guide when selecting your next wine. Bye. Can't believe we got tongue tied. <laughs>